Welcome back. Also to take care of some, some business. And uh, please click the slides forward for some reason. The big green button. The big green button. There we go. Thank you. Uh, and again, to take care of some business and say thank you to our sponsors. How many people attended the block party last night? Yeah? We want to thank AI Media for sponsoring the block party for us. These things cannot be done without having some sponsors and bringing down the cost so that we can uh, deliver these things to you at a reasonable rate. Um, and so we want to really thank AI Media for the work that, that they've done there. Obviously, Texthelp, Gould Evans, Cass, Norva Nival, and Tippy Talk have been wonderful sponsors as well. Um, and if you've not, if you didn't have a chance yesterday to listen to uh, Jason talk about the tools that Text Help's putting out, we'll have these videos out soon enough. Uh, but I had a number of people come up to me throughout the evening yesterday, just very, very impressed by what Jason delivered that day, yesterday, with the solutions that they have. Um, and I would encourage you to stop by the booth, as I've told multiple people since he came up and talked, to go talk to Jason about some of the solutions they have at Text Help. It's been an, they've been an amazing sponsor for our event. So it is Friday. It is Friday. We have a lot of things in store today. We have a number of breakout sessions. We have some wonderful talks this morning. And we are going to end the day today uh, with some exciting, some more exciting talks. But I'm here today to kind of bring up the R piece of the IRN. So the Implementation Research Network, research being key to that R, uh, we have a committee that is international, that brings together multiple sort of walks of life, and they've, they host on a continual basis a number of projects uh, that have brought together researchers, implementers from all around the globe. Um, and many people, I heard the uh, research reporting criteria session was attended well yesterday, but they come up annually to kind of give us an update on what they're doing. And so I want to welcome the research community to come on up and kind of give us a quick update on what's going on. For other people in the room that are interested in research, these are the people you should be talking to. These are the people that meet on a month-to-month, -month, if not week-to-week -week basis at times, uh, and have various subcommittees working uh, with them and various people throughout the nation. So Kavita, why don't you come on up? Thanks, Jamie. Hope you can get this clicker right. Lots of instructions on how to use this clicker. All right, thank you all for coming up here. These are some, some parts of our committee. Um, Eric, are you here? Kim, are you here? We have a few more people. Um, and Elisa? Okay. Hopefully they will be here soon or else we'll cover their parts. So thank you, Jamie. This is our committee for this year. We are somewhat of a fluid committee. We have people join some years and step off some years. Um, these are the people who have been working this year on our initiatives. Um, what I'll do is go over a little bit of what we focused on this year. Um, as you can see, there's a small group of us that kind of think, uh, think and talk about this stuff a lot, but this year we decided to broaden out and um, try to bring in more perspectives on our work. So as part of the Network and Learn series, webinar series that the UDL has, we, um, ha we have, so we've had some research webinars. So we'll be telling you more about those so you can watch the archived ones if you've missed the prior ones, and we'll be telling you about some that are coming up. Um, we also have a research strand at this conference. Um, we saw, we've seen some of you at the research presentations, and um, there will be some more today that we'll be telling you about. So. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the UDL reporting criteria. If you were here last year, we spent some time on this because we had just gotten these published on the UDL IRN site last year. The UDL reporting criteria are a set of guidelines created by the UDL Research Committee. It was a kind of a one-year initiative that started a couple of years ago at the, at the pre-conference uh, pre here. A group of us talked about the fact that UDL research reports on things in all kinds of different ways. It's sometimes hard to know what people are calling UDL. And based on that, those conversations, we decided to come up with some criteria for making a UDL claim. So um, over the course of a year, this group developed these criteria. We've published them on the UDL IRN website, so you can find them if you, uh, Sean's going to talk a little bit about the website at the end. And this past year has been exciting because people have started using these criteria. We 
have had researchers use the criteria to design studies, we've had people evaluating the criteria, and we've had people starting to use them in reporting on what they do. These criteria are useful not just for researchers, they're also meant for practitioners, people in the industry. They're basically uh, a minimum guidelines for what you should say you're how you're on how you're using UDL. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on them right now so that the rest of the committee can speak, but if you are interested, you can download them and um, we are seeking feedback on what you think about them, so please do let us know. We'll be working on continuing to um, refine and revise these criteria as we go. All right, so um, Eric, are you in the audience? Okay. I'm not sure where Eric Bohr is. He heads our higher ed initiatives. And um, Eric has been, um, he ma managed a webinar on UDL in higher education in January. Um, that one is archived on our website and he had a, a good discussion going on issues of research in higher ed. And um, okay, we're missing another person. I'm sorry about this. So we, we also have a group looking at UDL implementation in in K through 12. Um, this group will actually be presenting today in our research strand, which is at 11.15 to 12.15 in Universal D3. Um, and we also have um, another research strand presentation from 1.15 to 2.15 in Universal D3. So you can hear more about UDL and K-12 implementation efforts at that time. And finally, um, Alex? Thanks, so I actually am here. Uh, so. One of the uh, research studies that have, that are a part of the research strand here uh, was is being conducted by myself, my colleague Alisa Lowry, which I don't know who I know why it's not here, um, and uh, Kathy Howery from Canada. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we will be presenting uh, at 1:15, and our topic is. I find very interesting in, wi in which we, uh, we interviewed 19 experts in research in UDL and most of these 19 people are here in this room uh, with very strict criteria of how we defined experts in research and we will be presenting findings of that research study um, this afternoon as part of, uh, it's going to be a two-part session and the other session is um, presented by Cindy O'Connell and her doc students, and I do not remember what the topic is, especially now that I'm in the middle of a stage. So anyways, come join us at 1.15. Um, so one of the things that the research committee does are fabulous webinars. And if you haven't heard it from Kanda a few times, they are archived. So even if you are unable to attend, you can actually go to the website and get uh, the recording of the webinar. So you can see that two of them already took place and one was on the reporting criteria and another one was on UDL in higher ed. Uh, but the third one is coming up and it will be fantastic and we will be talking about measuring UDL. Uh, and what are some ways to uh, observe the UDL, what tools, what instruments are out there um, in published research that measure implementation of UDL. Um, we're going to ask your expertise and see what you want to see in an instrument like that. So come join us for that webinar. Uh, it's going the best hour you spend um, whole year. <laughs> So uh, my name is Sean Smith, I'm a faculty member at the University of Kansas, and I'm excited for us to be up here because, as Jamie said, this has been an annual uh, kind of update, and uh, as um, Kavita mentioned, the, the participants have been fluid, but uh, very much invested, and for me, in this annual update, I find this year, I'm really excited, we've always had our implementation, I, we've always had our R, research, but I think the fact that the strand, the attendance at these sessions, the conversations going on about research, and the connection with research to further facilitate implementation. From a researcher perspective, this is really, really exciting. I think we've, I don't know, I'm not sure if we've gone across a hump, but we're definitely moving forward in respect to um, further understanding the impact. Um, on our website, we have a number of different things, and, and, and want to direct you there. So the, the criteria that um, Kavita mentioned, that's also coming out in a publication, uh, will that be this year or next year? It will be a 2020. A 2020, which 
one of the reasons I'm mentioning that is the fact that it's getting more out into the field, into the literature to give it more validity to then hopefully help facilitate more implementation, which is excellent, one of the things we're trying to push. Uh, other elements, of course, we have, uh, we've had, and it's still being uh, updated, uh, a research database on universal design for learning in the literature. That's there. It's searchable. It's a wonderful tool. Uh, please utilize that to better understand what's taking place, what questions are being asked, what measurements are being used, and what's being published. And then just general information, as we've already mentioned, that is being archived and remaining there on the IRM website. So I'd urge you to go and visit there. We're always looking also for interaction and participation. Uh, and so please reach out to us. Uh, a lot of folks are, uh, on the committee are engaged very directly in research, uh, directly in uh, determining measurement tools, and also just very much wanting to better understand what's happening and to be able to help facilitate and support. So thank you. All right, thank you very much. If you are interested in the work of our research committee, feel free to contact us. You can contact any of us. Um, there's also our uh, research, um, sorry, email on the, on the web page, so you'll be able to find us that way. So thank you. Um, I think I am looking for Brian Dean to pass on the mic. Seems like no one is here for me to give the mic to the, today. 